so hairy, so much hair, that you could hardly distinguish the head from the tail. So this beast is concealing its identity. And the beast spoke and said that I am... What? Huh? I am... Are you guessing now? I am Jassas. Jassas means a spy. A spy. So this is number one, an island about one month's journey from the western side of Arabia. Number two, this is an island which conceals its true identity. Number three, this is an island of those who have PhDs in spying, in espionage, huh? in intelligence work. Jesus then said to them, there is someone waiting to see you over there at the monastery, Christian monastery. So this is a Christian island. When they went to the monastery, they found this young man, powerfully built, hmm, curly hair, but he was in chains. His hand chained to his neck, his legs chained. And this man started to question them, a number of questions. Uh, the Nabi al-Ummi, has he arrived in Medina? Nabi al-Ummi means, it doesn't, doesn't mean the Nabi who cannot read and write. No. It means the Nabi who is not a Jew. The Nabi who is Gentile. Has he arrived in Medina? Yes, he has. Are the people accepting him? Some are accepting, some are not. This man then says, it will be to their benefit if they will follow him. A very important statement. Then he asked, the, the date plantations of a particular area, is the crop still coming out in abundance? They said yes. He said, I don't think it will last for long. And then he asked, Buhayra to Tabariya, that's the Arabic name. The English name is the Sea of Galilee. The Jews call it Lake Kinneret. It is the largest sea in the Holy Land. It is from the Sea of Galilee that that whole of the Holy Land gets water. The Sea of Galilee. He said, is there any water in the Sea of Galilee? They said, yes, plenty water. He said, I don't think it's going to last for long. And then he said, I am Dajjal. I am Dajjal. And when I am released, I'm going to enter every single town and city. But notice, he didn't say Kampung. <laughs> He said, when I am released, I'm going to enter every town and city, except Mecca and Medina, because the angels will bar me. Which means at the time when the Jal's day will be like our day, and he appears in the world as a human being, at that time he cannot enter Mecca and Medina, the angels will guard him. Now then, we now know from this hadith, that when Dajjal is released and commences his mission, he will commence his mission from this island. Which island is it? In 1917, the British Secretary of State was a man named Lord Balfour. And Lord Balfour made a declaration a stunning declaration. Britain was the superpower in the world 
And Lord Balfour declared that the British government intends to pursue an effort for the establishment of a Jewish national home in Palestine. In 1919, a British general led an army which defeated the Turkish army and from a Jewish perspective liberated Jerusalem and liberated the Holy Land. And then Britain became the power which controlled the Holy Land. The League of, in those days you didn't have the United Nations, you had the League of Nations. And the League of Nations conferred upon Britain something called mandate power. So Britain was the mandate power who controlled the Holy Land. Britain controlled the Holy Land from 1919 until 19. 48. In 1948, Britain acted as the midwife for the baby to be born. The baby, of course, was the state of Israel. In consequence of all of this, I have come to the conclusion that the island was Britain. And so when the Jal was released and commenced his mission to deceive Banu Israel and to deliver to them what would appear to be the return of the Golden Age, it is from Britain that he commenced his mission. But if there is anyone who differs with me, then I have to invite them to tell me you tell me which island it is. You cannot just defer with me without telling me which island is it. Because the hadith is there in Sahih Muslim. You've got to deal with the hadith. During the time that the Jal was launching his attack from Britain, the Holy Land was liberated of non-Jewish rule. During the time that Britain was hosting the Dajjal, the Jews came back to the Holy Land. And during the time that the Dajjal was launching his attack from Britain, the state of Israel was restored. Three out of four already delivered. And in all of this, the overwhelming majority of Jews have been absolutely convinced that all of this represent blessings from Allah. That Allah is validating the Jewish claim to truth that Allah is fulfilling his promise to Banu Israel. Now comes a little more difficult part. It was fairly simple to identify the island of Britain. If when the Jal was in a day which lasts like a year, he will be in an island, according to the hadith of Tamim Dari. Where will he be in a day which is like a month? Is he going to move to another territory? And if he moves to another territory, how can we recognize it? The yardstick which I use to measure whether or not the Jal has moved to another territory in a day which is like a month is the yardstick of 
the state of Israel, who is the one who is keeping it alive? Who is the one who is conferring upon it security? Who is the one who is building it up constantly, feeding it, feeding it, and making it stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger? Is it Britain? The answer is no. Remember, your brother Imran is also a student of international relations. Don't forget that. The answer is no. Someone else has taken over from Britain as the strategic ally of the state of Israel. Britain is still there. But now there's someone else more important than Britain with a more strategic relationship. The United States of America is without any question whatsoever the most important strategic ally of the state of Israel in the world today without any question whatsoever. The United States of America is the country which is supporting Israel with the greatest amount of financial assistance and material assistance. The United States of America is the country which has a strategic military alliance with the state of Israel. And so, I have come to the conclusion that the jar in a day which is like a month is no longer in Britain. Britain now has to give way to another country. Britain was the superpower. Britain was ruling the world. But now another country mysteriously, strangely, inexplicably takes over from Britain as the ruling power in the world and the strategic ally of the state of Israel. This is the United States of America. When did it happen? Now we're going to test your knowledge of international affairs. When did it happen? I think you would agree with me, number one, that the Second World War would be the turning point.